This video is sponsored by Fiverr, connecting you with the freelancers you need to help build your brand, including logo designers, copywriters, website developers, and more. Click the link in the description to check out my curated store for my recent recommendations of Fiverr sellers. All right, you guys, which one of you is coming with me today, full frame or APS-C? Well, it's obvious, right? Full frame, it's better, so I should take that. Wait a second, what if I wanna do some vlogging? That flip up screen would be super handy. But on the other hand, the full frame depth of field is pretty sick. Although now that I think about it, I have some F1.4 lenses that get just as shallow for APS-C, but I can go so wide on full frame. But if I shoot telephoto on APS-C, I can get even closer because of the crop, but larger pixels equals better quality or lighter package makes more room to carry around snacks. You know what? Screw it. I'm staying home and watching Disney Plus. What is up people, Donna here, and today we're gonna to be talking about choosing between Sony's full frame cameras and their APS-C cameras. And the choice might not be as obvious as you think. I get messages pretty much every day asking me which camera people should buy. And generally these messages are from people who are fairly new to photography or videography and looking to get the most out of their camera while spending as little money as possible. For some people, it's their first camera and they wanna make sure that they're hopping in at the right place. And for others, they wanna know if it's time to upgrade. Probably because they watched a bunch of YouTube videos with a bunch of people with fancy gear and they got some FOMO. So today, we're gonna go through some of the reasons why for most people, I would say don't buy full frame. APS-C is probably the better choice for you. Not for everybody, but for most people. And then because I know there's someone out there watching who just bought an A7 III and wants a little validation on their purchase, <clears throat> me, We'll also talk about a few reasons why it makes sense to go full frame. Okay, why in the heck would APS-C be a better choice for people with full frame cameras becoming so affordable? Now the first reason is because the APS-C cameras are good enough. Now I know what you're thinking, I don't wanna be just good enough, I wanna be great. But what I really mean by this is that the quality on the Sony APS-C lineup is fantastic and it's more than good enough for most people and what they need to use it for. There are people out there using APS-C cameras in a professional setting, so there's nothing wrong with the quality. In even half decent lighting, I would argue that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference when they saw an APS-C photo next to the same full frame photo. And remember, we don't actually look at photos side by side like that in real life anyway. We look at them like this. That's what my face looks like when I'm scrolling anyway. And for video shooters, the APS-C lineup has the same 6K downsampled to 4K capabilities that the full frame lineup has. And it's fantastic. And as a little reminder, APS-C size sensors in video mode are the same size as Super 35 sensors used on countless Hollywood films for a long, long time. And if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you and me. The next reason to consider APS-C is because it is cheaper. I know a lot of people have their opinions on the $1,400 price point of the a6600, but that's still a whole lot of camera and it's 30% cheaper than the $2,000 a7 III. And that's comparing the most expensive APS-C camera to the least expensive of the current full frame ones. Now, if we take that one step further and snag the $900 a6400, you could also get a couple of lenses for the same price as the a7 III body alone. Now, of course, when you put a bigger sensor in a camera, generally you can expect the camera to be bigger, right? Yep. The APS-C line also has a size advantage for people looking for a smaller profile. Maybe you wanna pack light because you're traveling. Maybe you wanna bring two camera bodies in the place of one bigger one. Maybe you wanna be a little bit less conspicuous when you're shooting. Or maybe you just have tiny little hands and you need a smaller grip on your camera. Regardless of your reasoning, it's smaller and that might be an advantage for you. Another reason that ties in really nicely with the last two reasons is that on top of the cameras being smaller and cheaper, 
so are the lenses. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this point could definitely be argued since to get the same equivalent focal ranges and depth of field on APS-C, you end up making the lenses bigger and more expensive. But things like the Sigma APS-C Trio have made getting a fantastic, small, inexpensive set of primes super easy for Sony APS-C. For example, if you're looking for an awesome standard wide lens for full frame, you're probably eyeing up the 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master, which is $1,400. And for APS-C, if you're looking for something similar, you're likely looking at the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, which is $449. Now, I'm not saying that these lenses are equal. Obviously they're not, but they are the most commonly spoken of equivalents for the two systems. So are you willing to pay $950 extra for what you get out of the G Master, or would you wanna save that money and still get great results? And because of the way that the E-mount system works, you can use full frame glass, on your crop system as well, which can actually work to your advantage by using the crop to get a little bit more reach. For example, if you have something like a 70 to 200 on APS-C, that means you can reach up to a 300 millimeter equivalent, but still get your full megapixel count. And I know, I know, you can also use crop glass on full frame systems, but then it crops in automatically and you're basically using a crop system anyway, but with less megapixels. Now, getting back to the cameras themselves, all of the new Sony APS-C cameras have flip-up screens. And to be honest, this is the number one reason why I reach for my a6400 instead of my a7 III. If I need to film myself, the a6400 with the flip-up screen makes the process 10 times easier. And that's hard to say for me because I was a naysayer before. When I was shooting exclusively on the a6500 and people were asking for the flip screen, I was saying, you don't need a flip screen and you don't need a flip screen, but it sure is handy when you have it. And one last thing that I've noticed about the Sony APS-C lineup is that I'm pretty sure the autofocus is better. Now as a little disclaimer, I haven't done any kind of side-by-side -side tests on this yet, but I've been using the a7 III for a bit over a month now, and when I use the a6400, I always feel like the autofocus is doing a better job. Not to mention it has some of the newer features like better object tracking. And then of course, if you look at the a6600, you get even better autofocus features like eye autofocus in video mode. Now, I'm not sure exactly why this might be, maybe something about the smaller sensor making it easier to focus. That's just been my experience thus far. Okay, so now that we talked up APS-C for a while and hopefully saved you some money if you didn't need that full frame that's been sitting in your Amazon or B&H cart, let's talk about a couple of the reasons why you might actually want to go full frame. Like I said before, this is a bit of validation for myself, making me feel okay about my recent purchase. First of all, you might like a bigger form factor. If you're someone who comes from a DSLR and you're used to having a big chunky handle to hold on to, going to APS-C might be a bit of a shock. Whereas something like the a7 III gives you a little bit more grip. Personally, I have pretty big hands, so I like to have a bigger grip. I even go as far as to add an L bracket onto my a7 III that makes the grip a bit taller. And when I was shooting exclusively on the APS-C lineup, I would add these big wooden grips to them to help with that. Second, the full frame cameras usually have more physical functionality. For example, the a7 III has more custom buttons, a joystick, a front and back dial, separate exposure compensation control dial, and two card slots, which for pro shooters doing client work is a must. Thirdly, pro options. In the full frame lineup, we have four options. There's the hybrid a7 III, kind of a baseline that's good for video or photos. The a7S II, no one's really sure why they haven't upgraded to the a7S III yet, but it's the video-centric low-light beast. Then we've got the a7R III or a7R IV, which are the high-megapixel photography monsters, and if you're doing large prints or cropping a lot, these are a must. And the A9 or A9 Mark II, which are Sony's professional sports cameras. Now, all of these cameras have different sensors in them and different functionality based on what you would use them for. Whereas in the APS-C lineup, for the past two generations, 
They basically had the same sensor in them. Each camera has had minor upgrades and differences, but the image quality itself is pretty similar. So if it's important to you to have a very specific type of sensor for specific work, you're gonna need to go full frame just to get those options. Unless of course the APS-C line already covers you, then you're good. And that actually ties in quite nicely to the next point, which is high ISO noise performance. In general, full frame sensors usually do much better with high ISO performance and have much less noticeable noise. So if you're someone who shoots in a lot of low light situations where you need to be cranking up that ISO, a full frame camera might be the better choice for you. So like I said before, I still think that for the majority of people, APS-C will do the trick and deliver fantastic results without that cost of full frame. You can get a lot more for the same money, but there are some reasons to go full frame for certain people, or if you just have a pile of money and you don't care what you do with it either way. It's really gonna be dependent on you and the situation you're in and what you need. So hopefully this was a little bit helpful for you. But what do you think? Does it make sense to skip APS-C and go straight to full frame? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think and on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, I guess there's just one thing left to do. Give me a high. Fiverr empowers the world's creative community by connecting you to freelancers to help you build your brand. Need a new logo, website designer, copywriter? They're right there. Fiverr has the talent that you need to make it happen instantly. I'm talking about one click and you've got an order made. So click the link in the description to check out my curated store, some of the Fiverr sellers that I like, and if there's anything that you wanna see me add to my Fiverr store, make sure to reach out and let me know. Thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring this video and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.